All right. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the uh, very uh, first hour session of uh, UAI 2023. Uh, my name is uh, Lei Wen Zhang. I'm from the uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, or uh, HKUST. Uh, we have uh, four talks on neural networks and deep learning um, in this session. And the first talk is uh, Mixup E, uh, understanding um, and improving Mixup from directional derivative perspective. It is joint work by Yin Tian Zhou, Vikas Verma, Shirthak Mito, Wei Hong Tan, He Fan, Jiu Ho Kanana, Yashuan Banjo, Ano Solin, and uh, Kenji Kawaguchi. And Intian will give the talk, and he's online now. So Intian, you can uh, start. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Intian Zhou, a last year PhD candidate from the National University of Singapore. Today, it's my honor to present our research work titled uh, "Mixup E Understanding and Improving Mixup from the Directional Derivative Perspective." But unfortunately, I cannot do it face to face due to the visa issue. We appreciate the committee so much for uh, arranging the virtual talk. So this project is uh, has been a collaborative effort, uh, and I'd like to acknowledge my co-author Vikas Verma and all our excellent collaborators who have contributed to this study. So our research focuses on uh, the powerful data augmentation technology called Mixup. As many of you may know, Mixup has proven to be a valuable tool in improving the generalization of deep neural networks. But the underlying mechanics still remains unclear yet. So here is the content of today's talk. We will kick things off with exploring the implicit regularization of Mixup and then introduce our proposed uh, algorithm, the Mixup Enhanced Mixup E. So let's introduce the, the background uh, first. Mixup is a simple but powerful data augmentation uh, technology that gains huge uh, success in many fields. Take the image classification, for example. If we mix the two images from cat and dog uh, with coefficients 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 respectively, we can get a synthesized image uh, that is 70 percentage probability of being classified as a cat and a 30 percentage to be a dog, right? As we can see, mix up modeling the black, uh, from the black and white mode to the uncertainty aware. Now let's look at the formal definition. Assume the coefficient lambda is sampled from the beta distribution with hyperparameter alpha. Mix up generates a virtual in-between sample Mix uh, the synthesized input X tilde is uh, actually the linear combination of uh, two random samples drawn from the training data set, right? So here Y tilde is the mix up label. So if, if the alpha goes to zero, which means we do not use the any uh, data augmentation, it will recover the empirical risk minimization, which we saw called the uh, uh, ERM, right? So in this way, the decision boundary in the future space learned by Mixup is smoother. So as we can see the, uh, the toy example here, we're going to classify from the green dots to the orange dots. So the blue shading is a prob actually the probability to be classified as the orange dots. It's easy to understand because uh, Mixup learns any linear uh, interpolation between two categorical samples. So we can get a, a very smooth decision boundaries in the future space compared to the ERM, all right? So simple but useful, Mixup has carries a, a significant value and has been widely applied to the, to the various areas such as image classification, and time series, we can see we, if you have a two different time series, you can use the mix up to generate a new time series to enhance your classification. Okay? And 
Uh, it also has been used in the domain generalization. You can mix the uh, samples from the different domains to generate uh, more uh, confused samples to, to, to for a better uh, domain generalization, and as well as the graph classification. Okay. So now let's move to the next part. Our main motivation is uh, rooted in the implicit regularization. So uh, I will give you the uh, short idea. So what is the implicit regularization? Uh, sometimes it's called implicit bias. It characterizes the underlying term to be optimized uh, during the training phase with a specific algorithm even you didn't define this uh, term explicitly in your objective function. So uh, here I, uh, we show an example, uh, which is introduced by Daniel Soldier in 2018. So the implicit bias of gradient descent is actually um, in the binary classification is actually the maximize, the margin maximization. So here we can see the figure. Uh, the blue line here is actually your ideal, idealistic or perfect hyperplane to classify on these two uh, different kinds of dots, right? Then the red dash line is your learned hyperparameter. You can see your, even you uh, correctly classify all these uh, points, which means you reach the zero, uh, training loss. The decision boundary is still trying to find a, a perfect one, which is well maximize the margin. So um, the final perfect hyperplane is will converge to the direction which is orthogonal to the support vectors, right? As we can see, we, sorry. Okay, no question, huh? Um, so as we can see from the figure D and the figure E, the angle gap and the margin gap to the perfect hyperplane is decreasing, right? Okay, so to analyze the implicit bias of mix-up, implicit bias of mix-up instead of, of the gradient descent, we need to define the setting we use the first. We have the feature extractor F theta here, and we have the activation functions, there's two common activation functions, softmax and sigmoid. Then our loss function will be looked at like this. The L is actually your loss function equals your active the feature minus your ground truth, okay? Then we also need to do the mix up uh, with a, a linear combination of two random samples and we have a corresponding label. So our final mix of loss will define the over n square uh, combinations of the mix up samples. Okay, so it's very easy to understand. Um, our first theorem says that assume for all theta in the hypothesis class, capital theta, the function f theta always lies in a CK manifold, obviously k times differentiable and continuous, right? Then um, mixed up loss is equivalent to adding an implicit regularization term, R. The R is defined in this equation. So here the J stands for the Jacobian matrix, the uh, circle times notation, stands for the chronic product. So it may, it, it may look very uh, scary, but don't worry, we will just discuss the implications, okay? So, okay, I just talked about the point one, right? Minimizing the mixed up loss is equivalent to adding an implicit regularization R to the ERM, ERM loss. And for point two, R mainly depends on a series of directional derivatives. So if K is large enough, which means the reminder terms in the Taylor expansion will vanish, will vanish, right? So with probability one, if your A lambda 
goes to zero, at this limit, your reminder term will go to zero. So, which means if we can compute infinite terms of these directional derivatives, we can precisely compute uh, the implicit regularization. But it's sure it's not um, pra it's practical. It's not impractical, right? So the last point is the function f should be at least a twice differentiable, uh, continuous di differentiable. The last point is very easy to verify uh, in the toy example. We also <laughs> follow the, uh, sorry, <laughs> we're laughing. Okay, let's continue. So this point can be easily verified in the toy example. We, we also follow the uh, toy example in the Daniel surgery to conduct an experiment on separable data. Uh, consider a logistic binary classification with linear function f, uh, which equals to uh, wt transpose x, right? Then we can find that training the linear model f with ERM or mix up, uh, well, yes, the same implicit bias. We can see the loss is decreasing and while the norm of the WT as a T goes to infinity, will explode, will explode. Mm -hmm. And also the angle and the margin gaps to the perfect decision boundary are reducing at the nearly same time, mm -hmm. which means- mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to change the So any questions? Okay. Uh, so, which means uh, in the same, uh, in the linear model, we will have the same by implicit bias uh, on the gradient descent or training with the mix up. That's the same. So, in a nutshell, we have uh, two conclusions. The first is obvious minimizing mix up loss is equivalent to adding an implicit regularization to your M loss. And second one is the implicit regularization has a very complicated book complicated form, right? Okay, so to, to address the above concerns, we proposed an algorithm called mixup enhanced. We use the mixup E for short. This is an efficient improvement of mixup, strengthening the implicit bias of mixup. Well, if you consider, or if you believe that imposing the implicit regularization will give you a better generalization. Then you can okay believe that our proposed algorithm is surely better than the standard mixup, right? Actually, we proved it. Okay, let's discuss the limitation that arise when attempting to devise the algorithm directly from our theorem one. The first disadvantage is uh, minimizing Minimizing the implicit regularization of mix up in theorem one explicitly is actually impractical, right? Because it involves a, a large number of the, the derivatives. So the alternative way is to retain the mix up with an extra regularization that is more computational efficient. Another disadvantage is using high order approximations suffers a very heavy computational burden in the deep learning. So, so suppose you have to compute the Jacobian or even the Hessian at each time, at each iteration, right? It's unrealistic. So we choose to regularize model with only first order, or we could see the dominant term as a pro approximation. Here, our proposed mix up E goes like in this way. By filtering k equals to one terms, the first uh, order derivatives uh, is captured by the following equation. <clears throat> Here the q uh, x i <clears throat> is actually the, is literally the first order term with respect to x i in regularization r. And here the j f theta is the Jacobian matrix. Okay. 
However, computing the Jacobian in deep model at each step is expensive. So we choose to approximate the QXI by using the hat QXI with the, this form. Okay, it's much uh, clean and, <clears throat> and easy to compute. So this is prom promised by two different points. The first one is data dom uh, normalization. We can do the data normalization which means your mean of your data is zero. So we can remove the expectation term. Then we can uh, compute using the Jacobian uh, times your data XI. Then we use the ReLU to make sure activation function to make sure our the, uh, linearity as our final representation here. So our uh, final computation, the closed form of Q hat is uh, just your ground truth minus your active the function uh, future then times your representation, okay? But remember that we are, we're going to propose a loss function. So it should be positive. To avoid the negativity, the regularization will be, how do you say, we will just take the absolute value of the regularization. Then the final loss will be look like this. So here the eta is the only introduced uh, hyperparameter that controls your uh, uh, the strength of your regularization. Then eta hat is the actually going to normalize your loss scale. So it's, uh, it's just a simple strategy. And um, so. In this way, our mix up is very easy to implement. For each iteration, we just sample a lambda, the co uh, mix up coefficient from some distribution. Then we mix up the, our data. Then we compute our mix up loss. So these first three steps are follow the standard mix up procedure. Then for our proposed mix up e, we have to we have a, other three extra steps. So we have to compute the first order directional derivatives first, the Q hat, as we mentioned before here. Excuse me. Okay, uh, yeah. for, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, you have five minutes. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. So, and then we can get our additional loss, the R, right? Regularization. Then we compute the, our total loss. So optimize our total loss, well, gives our new algorithm instead of the standard mix up. Okay. Okay, finally, we, as we mentioned before, we have to based on a hypothesis, right? Which means uh, based on this regularization will give you a better generalization. So we proved it. So we followed it, uh, this paper to use the generalized linear model, which defined by HFX here. Uh, theta a theta transpose x and our constraint is defined depends on our proposed uh, regularization term q hat right so we will have the following uh, theorem suppose that the uh, activation uh, function a is l a Lipschitz. x y are the label space uh, and your parameter space are all bounded then we will have the following uh, generalization bound. So this is the uh, mix up, have the mix up loss, empirical loss, the expectation loss. We will have our uh, read market complexity based on this dual problem, which is the constraint defined in this uh, uh, parameter space. Okay. So as we can see, our red market complexity is not depends on the Lipschitz constant anymore. But compared to the Valina mix up, it will depend. It will depend. So, in general, we will have a better generalization guarantees. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> here is the results of our experiments. In image classification, mix up E achieves a better performance than uh, mix up and ERM. In with the different architectures, um, different uh, data sets, 
as we can see, we can achieve the best on all these benchmarks. And we also test our performance on the other forms of the data. For example, we, we test on the speech data set, then uh, compared to other two bit lines, we, we achieve the best on these different architectures. And we also test on the graph data sets and tabular data set. So as we can see, our proposed uh, uh, algorithm is, is just a simple variant of the mix up, right? But it's substanti it does substantially achieve the best compared to all many, most in most of the sub data sets here. And uh, we also show the generalization. So we plot the training loss and the test loss. As we can see the mix up E has a higher training loss and but has a lower test loss, which means we have a smaller generalization gap and we have a better generalization, right? So we tested this on a uh, wider SNAN architecture. Finally, we also tested our robustness of our model. We do the deformations, we, we, we do some transformations on our, our test data set. We, with rotation, like shearing, zooming and zoom out. And we just follow the uh, experiment setup, uh, in the manifold mix up. But as we can see, we achieve the, uh, the better robustness uh, compared to the mix up and the manifold mix up. All right. One minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks for the. Okay, thank service. you for the talk. Signing. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, hi, uh, everyone. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Yang from Washington State University. So um, I will uh, have some uh, discussion. First, uh, give some takeaway message from this paper and then uh, try to get some um, new uh, thinking about some potential question inside this paper. Yeah, so uh, the takeaway message I summarized as of two points. The first one is the mix up uh, as a method um, is equivalent to an um, um, uh, infinitely many regular term on the directional uh, derivatives of all the orders, which means that um, compared to the standard loss function, mix up is equivalent to adding some uh, multiple order regularization to the di directional directives. And the second uh, takeaway message is that uh, the proposed new method enhanced the version of the mix up uh, is to strengthen first order term, particularly by dropping the other term higher uh, than uh, the second order. So the reason why here is that the first order term dominate all the others. So uh, it's uh, it, for the efficiency cons uh, consideration, it's reasonable to uh, just to drop the higher order terms. So the result is uh, obviously um, the generalization performance can be improved by using the enhanced version of the mix up and also supported by some empirical result on the uh, right side of on this page. And also um, there are some notable stuff to uh, highlight is the trade for this improved uh, generalization performance is the computational um, um, additional com computational cost. Uh, which means that we may have one extra um, forward pass and plus a certain percentage of the time cost over compared to the standard mix up method. So I have two questions um, I think is open um, or unclear in this paper or this area. The first one is that how does the beta distribution in mix up um, impact the importance of the different orders in equivalent regularization. As we mentioned, the first order term will be the dominant term in the all the multiple order um, equivalent regularization. So is there any, in some like the principle inside the beta distribution, how this can be influenced the, uh, the final form of the importance of in the sum in the summation of the uh, regularization and the second question is how to further improve the generalization performance 
by studying the effect of the various orders, which means that how we can identify which one may be better and how we can make use of the importance of the multiple order term in the regular edition to improve further the general edition performance. Actually, the second question also identified in the paper in the end of the conclusion. So uh, yeah, that's all my uh, consideration for uh, learn, what I learned and what I think from this paper. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, so this is the, uh, okay, these two questions are the, the quite nice questions. So the, for the first one, okay, I, I answer your first uh, open questions. Huh? So which means the, um, the beta distribution actually here we use the same hyperparameter, the alpha equals the alpha, which means the beta alpha alpha. This is just to simplify our proof. So it, it's equivalent to a uniform distribution, right? But why the first order deter, uh, order term well, dominates the others because our analysis is mostly based on the Taylor expansion. We know that in the Taylor expansion, you have to, uh, how do you say, do the expansion in the very small neighborhood, right? Which means your interval is small enough. So it means your first order terms will have the least order of your, yeah, the, the, the small interview, the delta, right? So in, in, in that case, so if the delta is uh, approximate goes to zero, which means your, your first order term will be most valuable, most uh, important than the others, right? So, okay, for the next uh, uh, second question, how do you further improve the generalization performance by studying the effect of the various orders? Yeah, this, that's a very good question because I think this is so inspiring for the other following works to further uh, investigate the high order terms to, uh, to have a better understanding of the mix up, uh, the implicit bias of the mix up on the high order terms. But for us, we, we just trying to propose a practical algorithm. So we just only use the first order two for the easy computation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're on our time. So, so. Okay. Thank you.